Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon. And we're taking a look at the World 4 Skill Laboratory. Laboratory is located entirely in World 4 and is a passive skill with very little active gameplay. Laboratory is split into two sections and a small shop that resets each week. So the first section we're going to take a look at is the mainframe. And when you first open the mainframe, your characters will be lined up in this top left hand corner here and they'll have a red X with a power button on it. This indicates that the character is offline or is inactive in the laboratory. So to activate a character, you need to bring that character to the laboratory here in World 4. And when you open the mainframe, you'll have this button here at the top that says upload player. So this is the character that I'm currently on right now. And when I click upload player, it'll highlight this character and the red X will go away. This means the character can now be used in the laboratory. So there is something to note here and that once a character is active in the laboratory, you cannot use this character for anything else in the game until you extract the player and move it to what else you wanna do. Uh, once they're extracted, they'll no longer be able to provide the bonuses in laboratory. So initially, before you level up your characters, you will need at least two active characters uploaded into the laboratory to gain any benefits. So once you have your characters uploaded, you simply drag your first character near the prism, and this will create a line between the prism and your character. And then your secondary character, you drag near the bonus that you want, and this allows you to start playing a sort of connect the dots fashion in the game. So your goal is to simply connect more and more characters to gain more bonuses with the least amount of characters so you can do as other things with those characters. Initially, you will only have these square boxes unlocked and each of these square boxes will provide some sort of a bonus to outside of the laboratory, such as this one gives you total damage for every pet breed that you have unlocked and the next one over here would be uploaded players print two times more on their 3D printer. So the different bonuses that we can get do give us quite a bit of benefits. And one of the main ones that has been recently released is the Alchemy's Sigils here. So we do have to have this activated to unlock Sigils. But the second bonus that we can unlock throughout playing the game is these jewels here. And there are multiple of each color of jewel, and each of these jewels will provide you some sort of a bonus as well. For the example, this one is 40% more lab experience. This one allows your construction slot one to be three times faster. This one just increases the bonus that you get from the animal farm. So you'll gain more damage for simply unlocking that jewel. So the second section that we want to talk about is the console tab here at the top. And in the console tab, this is the rewards, so to speak, from laboratory. And this is unlocked by leveling up each of your characters. Each time that you get to one of these benchmarks here, you'll unlock a new chip slot. And these chips provide passive bonuses to your characters, depending on which chips you equip. These chips are single use, so you can only equip them to one character at a time, unless you have multiple copies of that same chip. We can see these chips by simply selecting any of the boxes, and there are 22 available chips right now. And each of these chips can be anything from more damage, to more defense, to some skill efficiency, to just miscellaneous bonuses that we can gain. And as you can see, currently we can unlock seven of these different chip slots. So there's a lot of passive bonuses that we can get for each character if we progress in the laboratory enough. An important note here is that you can remove these chips from your character by simply deselecting them and they can then be re-added to any other character. So don't be afraid to equip these even if it's not what you want to use long term. So let's take a look at the shop next, and this shop resets each week, but to unlock this shop, you do need to buy specific items from the NPC shop in World 4. 
and these items are the pile of processor chips. You need to collect three of these, and you can only buy one of them a day, so it will take a couple days to unlock this. Once you've gotten three of them, you simply click and hold here, and it will unlock the shop. The next item that you need as well is the strong jewels here, and you need seven of these to unlock the jewel spinner shop. So let's take a look at what these shops are now. These shops are located right here in between the mainframe and the lab tubes here, and they're kind of hidden if, you're not, if you don't know what you're looking for. But once you click on them, it will un open up this menu here and show you the chip repository at the top and the jewel spinner at the bottom. The chip repository gives you access to buy two chips each week, and these chips can be different things and will reset each week. You can see there is a timer here. Each of these chips that you unlock will cost you quite a bit of resources. This can be materials from skilling or monster drops, and will generally also cost some form of cooking meals from the kitchen and spices from the breeding's foraging area. But they're very worth it to unlock. As you can see here, boost mainframe line width here, which is a very good chip to get. I'm slowly working on unlocking the items that I need here. And then the jewel spinner at the bottom is one of two ways to unlock the jewels for the mainframe. This also requires some rare drop items as well as quite a bit of meals and a decent amount of spices to unlock. Remember that these will reset each week, so you want to try to pick these up as quick as you can to reduce the amount of time that you need to unlock all of your jewels. So while we're here, we're gonna talk about the second way to unlock your jewels, which is in the gym shop here. And if we go into the bonuses tab and world four, you will have the option of buying mainframe jewels here. They do cost 450 gems a piece, and you can only unlock two of them each week. There are currently 18 jewels, so even if you're buying these each week, it will still take you quite a few weeks to buy all of the jewels. So now we know how the laboratory works, so let's look at ways to improve our stats for laboratory. So the main requirement for laboratory is just to passively level up the skill. And the first way is skill efficiency. Skill efficiency is only gained from a few sources, but it does not directly influence the skill. Gaining more efficiency only increases your EXP gain with no actual benefits to the skill itself. So if we upload our character here, we can take a look at the AFK info here. And as you can see, all we're gaining is an EXP multiplier by gaining more laboratory efficiency. This is still a really good thing to have, but don't waste your time getting too much efficiency if you can't hit these breakpoints. As you can see, I have 12.1K and I'm gaining next to nothing for all of this extra efficiency right now because I haven't quite hit that breakpoint yet. Currently, no class can specialize in any World 4 skill, so it doesn't matter which class you use to level up laboratory, just use the ones that aren't being used for other things. As we level up the skill, each time we gain a level, we will increase our pixel width, which will let us use fewer characters to gain the same amount of bonuses as we get enough pixel width. For your gear, there are two pieces of equipment that directly increase your lab efficiency. And this is the lab ring, which gives you a decent efficiency boost, as well as the laboratory scrubs that also gives you a decent amount of laboratory efficiency. There are upgrades for both of these items. For the ring, it is unlocked from the new mini boss, Mutated Mush. He has a chance to drop a recipe called the souped lab ring recipe. That is a pretty much a direct upgrade of the lab ring. And for the shoes, we can upgrade them from the anvil in tab four. We can see the chic scrubs here, and it requires four of the laboratory scrubs, but it is a 400 lab efficiency gain if you can afford the material cost of it. So another big benefit to talk about is the kitchen upgrades. And if we take a look at our menu here, there's a couple bonuses that are really nice for us. One is from corn is the earliest recipe that we can get that gives us a lot of skill efficiency here. 
The next would be Garlicless Bread that gives us a direct bonus to lab EXP. And lastly, the major benefit that we can gain is from pancakes at the earliest. And this gives us increase to our line width in the lab mainframe. And each time we level this up, we gain two more pixels from all of our characters. So that's a huge benefit. One thing to mention here is there are multiple recipes that provide these bonuses and they all stack together. So there are, I believe, two of them that offer pixel width. So you can get a ton of extra pixel width simply by completing more of your cooking. So we're onto our cards next. And if we take a look at our cards, our priority is going to start from the World 4 mobs. The gelatinous cuboid can give you more lab EXP gain. Next is your crystal custard card, which gives you more passive line width here. From there, it would be the chaotic troll card, if you've unlocked this, gives you 30% more efficiency to all skills. The chaotic font card gives you more skill EXP gain. And the bunny card and amrak card both give you more skill AFK gain rate. For the card sets, we want to use the Easy Resources card, as this will give us the biggest benefit to our skill efficiency. Next, we're taking a look at the Post Office, and in the second Upgrades tab here, you have the Science Spare Parts box, and this gives you up to 1600 lab efficiency, 29% lab EXP gain, and I believe this is a placeholder here. It gives you plus 18 base luck. I'm sure this is going to change in the future, so we'll see what Lava has for us next. And last but not least, there is one stamp that directly affects laboratory, and that's at the very bottom of the skills tab. It is the lab tube stamp that gives us 10% more lab EXP gain at level 10. So this is a great way to increase our line width a little bit faster by gaining more experience. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this type of content. And a huge shout out to our Patreon members that support the work we do. Thank you from all of us here at Nocturne Gaming. If you would like to become a patron and get some added benefits, check out the link in the description. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below for me, and we'll see you next time.